So if you follow this beginner series, then you'll know where we're at in terms of we've got a model, we've got all of the parts, and you can do anything you want in terms of sending it to 3D print or send it to animation or the, the bits further down the line. But what if you want to do some cool lighting with the model that you've got inside of Nomad? So let's pair this scene back to, to the very, very basics, and we'll start building up this cool lighting setup. Okay, so this is all the way back to the most basic setup for the scene. And what I'm gonna show you is, first of all, if you come up to the top here and you look at um, the shading tab, you can see that it's on matte cap. And you want to make sure that you're not on matte cap, but that you're on lit. And that means it will be lit by this image down below here. And this is a HDRI or a high dynamic range image. And if you pick different images here that they supply to you in Nomad, you'll see that it affects the image quite dramatically. And that's because the lighting at the moment is coming just from this image that's wrapped all around. And to prove that, what we can do is, if we come up here and we go to um, the, the tab that says background, and if we switch on environment, and we turn the blur down to nothing and the exposure up a bit, you can see that there's an image in the background. If it's not, if, if you're not seeing it move, you have to use three fingers and roll it around like this. Now it looks quite blurred because these are quite low res and quite quite um, out of focus. Um, the fact that they're low res, you can see how jaggy they are here. Um, but that doesn't matter because we're not using them for anything other than lighting. And you can see in the background, if that lights from the back there, the lighting will come from the back onto the model. If you then, I mean, you can increase the exposure of this model uh, sorry of the of the map like that and you'll see if you can certainly see here you can see it all moving around and the shadows are all moving around now, that's not what we want to do at this point what we want to do is knock that exposure back down we'll just pick a standard one so just sort of like like this one in the woods something like that and then what we want to do is we want to knock that exposure down to almost nothing and the reason we're going to do that, we want it almost dark like that, is because we're going to light the scene with a set of lights, first of all. So we'll go back up here to the background and we'll change the environment back to colour and we'll just go for a nice dark colour. So if not black, just off black. Maybe because it's mainly red, you can probably stick with a reddish colour. Or if you want to, you could go to the opposite and go to like a darkish green like that. If you, it's always good to go on opposites of the colour wheel if you want to do complementary colours. So go across like that and nice and dark. And you can barely see him in the background there. But that's how we want it. Because what we want to do is we want to light the scene with just the lights for now. So what we're going to do is pick a few lights, first of all. So I'm going to do what's called a three light rig or three point light rig. Or there's quite a few different names for it. Essentially, it's used by a lot of photographers and a lot of um a lot of 3D artists will use this technique. And you're gonna put two, uh, three lights overall, but two at the front, one at the back. So you'll have a fill light, a key light, and a rim light, or, or a back light, they're called. So the, the first two we're gonna do are the fill and the key. So first of all, we'll go to light, and then we'll go add a light. We want to change that light to its type. So you tap on it, and then tap on the little icon on the left and go spotlight. So we've now got a spotlight. And I want to move it with the gizmo. Oops, it's just gone off. Now I can't see it there, and there's a reason for that. That's because the icon is off. So you can see in the shading menu there, under light icons, switch light icons on, and you'll always be able to tap and see your light. So I'll bring it up to the front. And if we look from above, this is a good way of doing it. You want this to be front and either left or right. It doesn't matter which way you do it. And this is gonna fill your, your um, It'd be, be the main um, light that will fill your model. So you can see there it's on him. And now we're going to change these these settings a little bit here. So we're going to increase this number, this, this distance here. And if you want to see what that's actually doing, tap on the light again and it's here. So we're changing the softness is the blue one and we're changing the cone angle, which is the orange one. You can see how the, the angle gets tighter or or wider, depending on what you want to do. So with this one, we want to go quite wide and quite soft, so it'll give a nice fill. And we want to ramp the intensity up a bit, because this is your main uh, filling light. 
Now you can leave the color it for the moment. It, it's a white light, so that's absolutely fine. So if you leave that like so, that should pretty much do what you want it to do. It just gives you light coming in from that side. So now we want to do what's called the key light. So we'll go to light again, add another light. And this one, we want the opposite side. And it's usually good practice to have it a bit lower down than the, than, than the main fill light. We want to change it again. So change its type to spotlight. We want to rotate it around. I want to have it coming in from the side. So again, from above, we've got this one at the front here, front and left. And we want this one, sorry, front and right, and this one front and left. So we'll bring it over to the side a bit. So it's it's popping in exactly the opposite side, um, uh, opposite and front, exactly the same as the other one was. Now what we will do is we'll change the color of this one. So it's nice to, 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 to change things up a little bit. So we'll tap on it and we'll make that much more of a red color for now. We, we, we might change that ready orange sort of color. So this will warm it up from this side. So pump the intensity and you can see there it's made an orange glow on this side. And then from the front, you can see there that you've got this nice orange glow from this side. Maybe too, too ready orange, actually, now, now I've seen it. I think what we might do is we might have to cool that down a bit. So let's let's actually cool that down, cool it down. So whiter and whiter, there we go. So it's, it was too aggressively orange. And that's given us a nice light from this side. Nothing super dramatic yet, but enough to, you know, to, to highlight what we're, you know, what we're trying to do. So the last one is the rim light, and this will this will this is the one that really makes it pop. So we go add light, go from above, push this one to the back now, push it somewhere. We don't particularly care where it is at the back yet because we're going to move it around. We'll make that a spotlight as well. So we go spotlight, and then we want to rotate it back like so. So this is pointing at the back of the model. So we're going to bring it over to one side or the other. And now what we're going to do is change the color of this one. And we'll change this one to a bluey color. And we'll really crank up the intensity on this. Watch how it lights the back. You should be able to see as I'm, as I'm increasing that intensity now, how it's lighting it really strongly from the back. You see it bright here. So what that means is that so you get the real high dynamism and that this this rim light as it's called is the one that really makes things pop now if it's not enough you can go up a bit higher so just drag it a little bit higher and rotate it around a bit so make sure it pops on onto the things you want it to pop on so there's no light on this rock here so i want to increase the cone angle the the, the softness and the cone angle like so so it's really what you're looking for is this dramatic lighting here so where you can see down here, it's it's coming off this rock and you can see really harsh bluey white light, which goes, you know, it really frames up what you've got. It almost gives it a white outline. And that pretty much gives us what we need there for this really bright looking, um, bright looking light coming from the back. But now what we want to do is maybe go back and just play a little bit with the others. So let's go back to our first light, this one up here, and we can bring that in a bit more now and we could say right this one maybe this one needs to be a bit brighter so we can go tap on it and we'll bring that up and we'll pump the intensity on that one a little bit and you can see there now how it's creating these really nice shadows here and if you want to test how this is working if you do the three finger roll you'll be rolling all three of them lights and because we've got that one selected you'll see it rolling now we don't want to do this much but it's good to see where those lights are moving so you may want to, you know, you want you may want to play with this a little bit, but if you go all the way like this, then you've got two lights at the back and one light at the front, which doesn't work. So really, all you should be doing is micro movements of these, so something like that. And what you're looking for is interesting shadows or shadows that are playing in an interesting way. And if anything's not lit correctly, now is the time to find it and move the light accordingly. So you might want to move this around a little bit. And once you've got it right with those, what you can do is you can play with the background again if you want now, or even add an image if you wish. You add an image in the background image here. We're not going to for this one. So let's change it back to um, a fiery orange color like so. Bring it down a bit darker. There we go. 
that's nice and then what we'll do now is we'll if we've got all of those three set up we can now bring back our world like the environment like so now you can just try the other one you've got and just bring it up a little bit and you can see now how it's adding little a little bit more of a fill so this is much more like your original fill like so in fact i'll pin it open so we can keep looking at it let's change it to something else let's go for this overall ready looking one and you can see it changes the it changes it quite quite subtly really it's you know it's not a huge change now because most of the lighting is being done by those lights so this this isn't dramatic if you of course go and crank your exposure right up then it will make a big difference in your scene but we're not trying to do that we're you know we're, we're using our own lights for most of of this we you know we're getting the you know the drama from our from our own lights which seems to be working quite well so now what we want to do is bring back the post process so i'm going to switch that on like so and i'll show you some of the things that will add a bit more drama to it so let's just make sure it's open so we've got the pin open so the things we've got on reflection is on doesn't really matter and global illumination will just improve it a little bit ambient occlusion is on but now what we'll do is we'll crank that right up if we turn that off you can see what that's doing as it's going on and off is it's just making the darker areas that little bit darker so down here under the feet it really can help and you can increase the amount there like so um, we can change the curvature bias which might make a difference it doesn't in this particular case and then let's just bring up that depth of field now what that'll do is that'll send these rocks out of focus at the back so as long as you're tapped on something at the front you'll see here that this is out of focus if i zoom in on it you can see the hands in focus and the rocks out of focus so that can add a real nice touch of, of, of realism to it as well let's spin it around like this just trying to show you from a different angle here while, while we're playing with this let's open that again so we'll go to the next one down now here's one that you might want to try in a, in a shot like this which is bloom so you might feel that th this warrants a really glowing light um i don't it looks a bit like you know it looks like it's blown it out a bit too much there so i'm going to shut it off but you can sometimes get a good effect um with with the bloom but i would normally recommend you doing it really low if you like like that if you're going to use it i'm going to turn that one off because i don't i don't like it and you can play with things like curvature which will give you um basically what it'll it'll, it'll give you like a, a line you can see if i goes right in you can see all of the the red areas here are because of the curvature if i just tap on it here you can see i've got a red color if i change that to a lime green you'll see what's happening so it's almost giving you an edge so you can get some nice graphic effects um and you know that isn't what we're after but that is one good way to do it if you want to get some really crazy effects you want to keep it whatever your main color is i would make it that color and it can give it a nice graphic graphical look um but be very very careful and then the last couple of things, if you wanted to play with them, you've got things like chromatic aberration, which is where it'll split it in different colours. Don't really need it for this. Vignette is always nice. You can see how this dark uh, vignette around the edges makes it look like an older classic image. And that's good sometimes if you um, take the background and you change the background colour to a, a, a bit brighter, warmer. So maybe even into those oranges again, like so. And then keep the vignette on. And go back to vignette and then bring that up you can see like so this is a hardness but you can get a nice old film look around the edges so that can be quite useful if you want to play with that one a little bit and then come down you've got grain which can be good depending on the type of image you want sharpness you could play with to, to you know to, to definitely sharpen up some of these little bits on the on the cloth and then probably that's the last one you'd want to look at unless you want to go into changing colors which is back up to tone mapping or you can go with color grading which we're not going to cover either of those in this video and that's really how you can you know you can you can you know light this scene quite simply if you want to make it super dramatic go to the lights change one of those colors to some really random color so let's go with a really harsh green light and if you want it to be like a, a like horror dramatic, bring that light lower. So you, if you uplight anything, you will always get like a really um, 
you'll end up with a really dramatic, um, oh, I've done the back one by mistake, that's why that didn't work. Let me change that back to blue. I, I, I actually, I, I lit it with the, uh, I changed the green on the back one instead of the front one. So we'll change it to the front one. And we'll change the color on that one. We'll change that to the green. You can see there what that's doing. Uh, it doesn't work as well because of the green on the red. You know, you've got to be a little bit careful. Um, but what that will give you is, is that really dramatic up light like so. And that might give you like a horror -y or Halloween-y kind of effect. But again, you're mixing a lot of colours here now. So if you wanted to put, um, th you know, that, that green in, I'd suggest that you change the background to complement that a little bit, maybe something like that. And then you can see the red fighting with the green. And look how it's made it look odd now with the curvature there. So just be a little bit careful with, with these because um, you can really screw up your, your, your colours. Um, if you if you start throwing in random colours without any planning, so have a play with that and try all all of the different settings that that I've shown you there, and make sure you've got some nice colours in your lights, and that you really move them into a position that really complements the, the the model that you've got. So looking for this rim light around the edges is is probably what you want to be doing. Thanks for watching the video and if you did enjoy it then please give it a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other artists that like this kind of content. And if you liked it enough to give it a thumbs up then why not subscribe to the channel and we'll let you know when we're dropping new content. Have a great week.